This is the story of my Appalachian trail hike through the North Georgia mountains. This photo was taken uh, May 20th in the morning. We just drove 12 hours straight from uh, Illinois to the uh, Amicola Falls State Park to pick up the Appalachian Trail through the Approach Trail. Go over here. Well, this is up on top of the falls at the Amicola Falls. We decided to uh, start past the stairs because um, we were all really tired. Now I wanted to uh, I wanted to uh, camp out that night and uh, pick up fresh in the morning, but um, of course I was outvoted and uh, we headed up the mountain. We are here, AT, at the falls. Trail. What to be said about the approach trail at Amicola Falls, Georgia? We started on the top of the waterfall. It's seven and a half miles up to Black Gap Shelter. The views were incredible. Uh, the steep angles will definitely let you know um, above and beyond whether you are ready for this trail or not. Um, probably one of the most tough climbing. I had on the entire trail uh, was the approach trail to Springer Mountain. Uh, we ended up camping out at Black Gap Shelter, just outside of Black Gap Shelter. We all set up our rigs and uh, had dinner and went to bed. And uh, about one o'clock in the morning, we hear this huge tree branch snap or, or tree snap and a large, <clears throat> deep groan rah, from the ground. and, and to me, it sounded like a bear fell out of a tree. Well, of course, everybody jumped out of their beds and, you know, WTF, flashlights going all over the place. Thankfully, the neighbor uh, next to us, they had a German Shepherd. And, uh, of course, the German Shepherd just kind of chased the bear away kind of thing. So that was the adventure uh, on the approach trail uh, up to Springer Mountain. Springer Mountain. I got up the next morning fully rested. Uh, my hammock served me well. I uh, really enjoyed the whole hammock experience on the trail. Um, if you are cowboy camping or tent camping, you might want to look into it. My feet were elevated. Uh, my back was rested. Uh, no aches and pains in the morning, even after that grueling hike uh, up the approach trail. So we set off in the morning and um, went to the top of Springer Mountain. And uh, of course, uh, Zach beat us, speedball, up the hill. And uh, he was waiting for me on top and uh, took a couple pictures and uh, shot a video I will show uh, later. And uh, yeah, it was a wonderful hike up to the top of Springer Mountain. And then we, uh, when my brother showed up, he was, uh, he was still hurting pretty bad. Um, his circulation in his legs aren't so great. So we decided to uh, hike down to the Springer Mountain shelter on the top of Springer Mountain, about 0.2 miles um, down the trail. And uh, we spent the day hanging out. And I got a video of that as well. Well, we're here. We made it. The Appalachian Trail. Drove 12 hours overnight to get here yesterday. And then we hiked the approach trail. So uh, needless to say, we didn't make it up here till this morning. We ended up camping halfway up the mountain. And uh, we're here, I'm tired. And if you think this trail's a joke, you're wrong. Day two on the trail. We took a Nero day. We're out here at uh, 
Springer shelter, such a beautiful shelter too. Kind of look at the woods, yay trees, right? you can see that but I'm sleeping in the bunkhouse in my hammock beautiful shelter well taken care of enjoy what you can the day on top of Springer Mountain was absolutely amazing uh, we met a guy called bartender who came up later in the evening he actually hiked up a six-pack of beer and uh, my brother and Zach really really enjoyed that so uh, it was really nice to meet him, uh, a great guy up on the trail. Uh, got up, made breakfast, uh, packed up, hiked down Springer Mountain. Um, this is the, the back road, um, forestry road entrance that a lot of people use to go up the short side of Springer Mountain to avoid the approach trail altogether. Uh, if you're a through hiker <clears throat> and you don't want to put yourself through some needless pain, uh, this would probably be, be a nice launching point for you to shoot up a uh, a mile up the side of Springer, a um, bunch of switchbacks, not too extreme, and uh, go get pictures on that plaque and start your journey that way. Uh, that approach trail is no joke. Anyway, we spent the day um, hiking down through the trail. Uh, to Stover Creek Shelter where we stopped and had lunch. Um, by the time we made it down to Three Forks, uh, I think we were ready to camp for the night, and we really had a pleasant evening at Three Forks. <clears throat> started raining on us in the night, and uh, Zach's little uh, cowboy camping outfit started leaking on him, so he ended up sleeping underneath my tarp, underneath my hammock. I thought that was pretty funny. And uh, my hammock held up well, uh, held up to the storm well. I even had uh, Zach uh, high and dry underneath me, and uh, we made it through the night okay. Uh, took a bath in a stream. Uh, I got a video of that as well. Well, not of me bathing, but of the, the stream I jumped into. About swept me down river, but uh, of course I got big rocks to catch in, that kind of thing. Uh, really enjoyable stay at Three Forks. Day three on the trail. Speedball, one of my hiking buddies. Spent the night at uh, Springer Mountain. And uh, the Springer Mountain Shelter had some storms last night, but we were all three nice and safe. Taking it real easy. My brother's struggling, so uh, no set plans. We're going to do what we can. Day three on the trail. I'm at Three Forks, Georgia. Just before Hawk Mountain camping area. I think we're planning on staying here tonight. That would be just fine with me. Remember, enjoy what you can. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful here. Thanks, everybody. Night three on the Appalachian Trail. Hanging out in the hammock. Uh, let's see what's going on. Getting rained on. But I'm um, staying dry. So we set off from Three Forks that next morning and uh, head off towards Hawk Mountain Shelter. Uh, which was going to be a rally point for us to eat lunch or whatnot. Um, so we're sitting up at a Hawk Mountain shelter, and there's this just this huge guy, over 400 pounds. Uh, we called him Mayor Mike, Mayor of Hawk Mountain Shelter. Uh, he'd been sitting there for a few weeks. Um, he had a big backpack full of diet food, the powder drinks, and and all of that. And uh, Zach ran down, got him a couple gallons of water, and it turns out he's a pretty nice guy. <clears throat> Uh, high school coach, um, history teacher for high school, and um, he was just up there trying to get away from the McDonald's and the Burger Kings, and uh, we just thought it was unbelievable. He had this huge blister on his foot, and uh, apparently he couldn't make it more than a couple hundred yards down the hill. Uh, we later found out that uh, Mayor Mike was up there for almost a full week after we passed him uh, before he finally got down off the mountain. 
Um, he lived local, about 45 minutes away. He kept saying, all i got to do is call my daughter, but I don't want to tap out yet. Uh, one incredible uh, character to meet out on the trail. Mayor Mike will be unforgettable. This is day four, day three. Hawk Mountain Shelter, day four, Hawk Mountain Shelter. It's beautiful out here. Not a bad hike. Living on the trail. So we all three finally rally up at Hawk Mountain Shelter uh, with Mayor Mike. And uh, my brother decides he's pretty much done for the day. He's pretty sore. Um, so we decided to call for a shuttle and uh, <clears throat> head down to Horse Gap to get picked up, um, take a shuttle out to such as Georgia. And uh, it was a pretty nice walk down. Um, all I can say about such as Georgia is I cannot express uh, the hospitality, um, the friendliness. Um, that that family-run um, business showed to us as, as hikers on the Appalachian Trail. We stayed up in the hostel upstairs. Um, as far as hostels go, it, it had to be my favorite one. Uh, and again, I, you know, just wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, they had bear canisters for rent <clears throat> to get you over Blood Mountain and uh, to turn in back at Neal's Gap, available uh, for like 15 bucks. And uh, again... A good place to hang out. I highly recommend such as if you're in northern Georgia. Uh, good place to be. Absolutely beautiful day today. My brother called for a shuttle. I guess we're gonna pick up and take to Suches and uh, camp there overnight. Resupply, we're going way slower than I ever imagined we would. For sure he's bitten off more than he can chew and I think he's uh, rethinking the whole trip. Either way, I'm gonna continue. Uh, but again, I don't worry about how many miles we've done or anything like that. Uh, definitely here for just the adventure. You can kind of see the trail as I'm walking it. And, uh, wow. You better pack a lunch, you come out here. This is no joke. Uh, having a great time so far. Uh, besides all the madness, which is normal. Enjoy while you can, everybody. Thanks. Hello from the trail. Uh, we're four days on the trail. Uh, just now got to a hostel so we can uh, upload some videos and stuff. Uh, my phone died the first day, so I got some stuff on my regular camera, but I'm going to have to wait till I get home to uh, upload all of that stuff. I don't want to waste the time. Uh, having a beautiful time. Thank you very much for everything. Uh, I will check in as soon as I can, and now that I've got some juice on my phone, I'll start taking some videos on the trail uh, I can upload directly. So uh, bear with me, I'm on the trail, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy what you can everybody. Such is Georgia, it's a beautiful day here. What is it, the 23rd, 24th? Anyway, day four on the trail, let's kind of give everybody an idea of what a hiker hostel looks like. You know, There's Patch. Chores I gotta do. <laughs> There's oh. Patch, my brother. Gotta do the chores. Speedball, our hiking buddy. And uh, there's Speedball's own personal little room here. And there's my setup. All the gear laid out all over the place. I mean, for $15 a night, a warm room and a hot shower I feels am. real good. There we go, on the trail. Now the shuttle from Suches, Georgia, will only take you down to Woody's Gap. And uh, honestly, 
with my brother the way he was, I was I didn't mind a yellow line and a few miles of the trail. Now the trail north through Woody Gap <clears throat> up to uh, Big Cedar Mountain was amazing. That's my brother hiking up the hill. Some shots we took on the way up on the switchbacks. Some beautiful views up here. Flowers along the way. <clears throat> That's a lookout point um, up on the mountain there. On Big Cedar Mountain. Met a young couple, uh, a Marine and his girlfriend up there. They were, uh, what a great spot to go hang out. <clears throat> and they were kind enough to take some group photos of us. Some wonderful views up there. Of course, just clowning around. It was an amazing hike. Great day. We ended up camping out at, uh, where was it? Jared Gap up on Blood Mountain. Now you have to have bear canisters up here and uh, no fires. You had to do cooking stoves only. And I've got videos on that. Uh, but the next morning, this is when the bear happened. Picking up Blood Mountain. I'm shooting a video. What a beautiful view. Appalachian Mountains. Day six. Day six on the trail, Speedball. Here's the campsite. Here's my hammock. Just kind of hanging out on uh, Blood Mountain. Bear canister required, of course. It's well worth taking one. Speedball's a uh, cowboy camping. Hey, patch. I'm using Zach's phone, so uh, I try to give you a call and tell you I love you, and I was thinking about you. And, uh, it's absolutely beautiful here, and uh, got a lot of people camping up around the corner here. Sunset. Don't drop the phone. bad thing is, is we can't have any fires. It's a uh, stove only on Blood Mountain. It's a beautiful day here. Just waiting for the sun to go down. We're going to spend the whole day on the peak tomorrow and uh, take a near on top of Blood Mountain. I look forward to some videos. Enjoy what we can everybody. Thanks. You're down. Day five, five. speedball and patch, nib, how you doing? <laughs> what a beautiful campsite. We're up on Blood Mountain, what, Gooch Gap? No, Jared's Gap. Jared's Gap. Right below Blood Mountain. Got a bunch of campers, Memorial Day weekend, and uh, definitely worth humping the bear canister. Yay! Hi mom. Uh, hi mom. We're camped down there. Anyway, let's kind of look around. The sun's going down through the trees. Absolutely beautiful here. And just be advised, no campfires on Blood Mountain. Uh, cook stoves only. They don't even want you gathering wood for your little hobo stove. And uh, bear canister required, of course. The AT. Here's the white blaze. Yeah. Heads off that way. Up Blood Mountain. We're going to peak that tomorrow. Spend the day on top of the mountain. Because uh, we're set up for it. Should be an exciting day. I'm going to try to get a sunset shot or a sunrise shot from the top of Blood Mountain. Enjoy waking. 
that cold wind on Blood Mountain definitely chased me out of my hammock about 4.30 in the morning. I ended up sitting on my thermal pad uh, with my blankets wrapped around me uh, watching the sun come up, unable to make a fire. Well, when Dave got up, we started making coffee and uh, <clears throat> got Zach together and he got up and uh, we were eating breakfast and uh, Zach had a big cup of oatmeal in his hand he just stirred up and I was sitting there eating a cheese filled tortilla both canisters both bear canisters were wide open of course we were making coffee and doing breakfast uh, when my brother looks down and he goes guys bear so we both kinda looked at him like yeah right and he goes no guys bear hey bear so we both stand up and no kidding, 10 foot from us is a young male black bear. I would say between 130 and 150 pounds. And uh, seeing a bear at the zoo with a nice cage in between you is one thing. But having a bear 10 foot away from you with food in your hand is quite another. Uh, needless to say, we started making a commotion and all three of us dove for our backpacks. <clears throat> My brother and uh, Zach both grabbed their cameras while well, I went for my bear horn. I had a little sports air horn that I brought specifically for bear encounters uh, out of my pack. And I didn't have it tightened down hard enough, so I, as much as I squeezed, I couldn't get that horn to go off. And uh, Zach starts yelling back at me, don't blow the horn yet. Um, I believe my brother has a picture of the bear. Uh, on its way out. We had about eight people above us, um, I don't know, about 20 yards from us up the hill, actually <clears throat> camping, and they heard, you know, us going on about the bear, so they all come rushing over to see the bear, and they kind of chased the bear off, thankfully. Uh, it ran down the path where another couple was camping, about 30 yards down the path, so I started yelling down the trail, you know, there's a bear coming, there's a bear. And uh, he let us know that the bear ran up the hill and they were safe. Um, but that is about as close to a bear as I ever want to be. It's Saturday, the 25th of May, 2013. I am climbing Blood Mountain. We're at the first shelter before we hit the peak northbound. Speedball's just catching up with me, but I did take off early this morning. We're down at the shelter. Beautiful trail. Had a black bear show up this morning when we were eating breakfast, 10 foot away from our camp. No kidding. <laughs> Everybody's running for cameras. I was running for my bear horn. But uh, my brother got a picture of the bear walking off. And uh, I'm going to have him post it on Facebook and I'll put it on my slideshow when I put everything together and do the documentary. Having a great time. And, uh,. Whew, another day on the trail. I'll shoot another video from the top. So we packed up from Jared Gap after the morning excitement and I went ahead and head to the top of Blood Mountain uh, with the intention of spending the night in the shelter up there. But once my brother made it to the top of the mountain, um, we just decided it would be better off if we headed down to Neil's Gap and uh, stay at the hostel. The views on Blood Mountain are incredible. Uh, the only way I can describe it is uh, just amazing. Now it's a very, very switchback, <laughs> switchback, and more switchback to get up here. But uh, once up there, um, it was absolutely gorgeous. Had large groups of people, uh, must have been 50 people on top of Blood Mountain when I was there. Uh, a group of German women seen here in this photograph. <clears throat> um, just people and people. I did. The mountain was very crowded. It was Memorial Day weekend and uh, everybody was out to see the views. Uh, we even had a piloted glider plane flying loops around the top of the mountain when we were up there. Uh, I kind of got a video of it and I will post it along with this. It is the 25th of the 5th, 2013, and I am on top of Blood Mountain. Amazing view. I'll take you out to the edge here. Of 
quite a hike up here, let me tell you. But, uh, here's the Blood Mountain Shelter, oldest shelter on the trail. That's the Lookout Rock. I'll shoot another video of that here in a minute. I'll show you the shelter. And this is the oldest shelter on the trail. Of course, you got the fireplace sealed up. And I'm sure we've all seen this on videos a hundred times. But, uh, what a beautiful day. We got a bunch of people up here Memorial Day weekend, uh, hiking groups. Wow. Ugh. So, yeah, there you go. Blood Mountain. Enjoy what you can. Look at a point on top of Blood Mountain. It's an absolutely beautiful day. <laughs> what a view. Made the hike all worth it, didn't it? Beautiful. Where'd he go? There he is. He came right over the top of us a minute ago. Glider. Top of Blood Mountain on the 25th of May. Whoo, what a hike. Neal's Gap. It is definitely not the place National Ge Geographic um, dresses it up to be. Uh, slightly on the shady side. Now, if you don't mind uh, a couple of cats peeing in the bunkhouse and a little bit of mold smell, um, they do serve a good meal. Uh, Pirate, that's the guy who runs the hostel, is uh, basically he lives there and he lives on the tips. Um, he kind of takes care of the place. It's just that kind of way. Uh, he's got another guy there with him named Lumpy. He also stays above the hostel and uh, he is the shuttle guy out of Neil. Um, these guys um, are very friendly and hospitable. And um, but they're no nonsense kind of guys. Uh, I had a good experience there. I mean, besides, you've got to get past the, you know, everything's super expensive, and uh, those shuttle rides cost forty bucks out of Neil's Gap. Uh, Lumpy makes a good living. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Pirate has uh, through hiked ten times back in the '90s, so you got to give him respect for that. Um, these guys are just trying to get by down here. Uh, down in the hostel, uh, the store, of course, is a very high-priced uh, outfitter. They've got pretty much anything you need to hike on the trail um, and home furnishings to boot. Um, again, be warned in Neil's Gap. Um, just, you know, don't expect the National Geographic special. Hey, it's the 25th of the 5th. We're at the High Wine E Hostel. Pretty cool place. <laughs> A 
Got a cat living in here. <laughs> and the hostel's downstairs, so we are literally just underneath the Tree of Souls. See all the boots hanging off the tree. There's Blood Mountain right there. We hiked that today. Beautiful. Enjoy what you can. Now on a positive note, we did meet a lot of great hikers at Neil's Gap. A uh, big group of us stayed down at the hostel. Uh, we all ended up becoming friends and uh, hiking one way or another. Uh, we ended up meeting just about all of them uh, later on down the trail. It was a great experience. <clears throat> So hiking out of Neil's Gap, we went ahead and took it easy. We already uh, planned on taking an easy day because <clears throat> my brother was going to take a zero day up on top of Rock Spring Top where we ended up camping and uh, I was going to push on the next day by myself. Uh, we had a great hike up the hill, um, met some great guys hiking there, got some flower pictures. And I believe this is the view from the campsite. So, uh, yeah, I definitely shot some videos of that, and I'll show some more pictures later. It is the 26th of the 5th. We're uh, camping on top of Rock Spring Top, Georgia. It's a beautiful site. There's my hammock rig. And check out this view. Are oh, you on there? Absolutely beautiful here. Camping on top of Rock Spring Top, we met these three guys. Now, the two guys sitting down are teachers from Florida, and uh, that's their high school buddy standing up, Ox. Uh, he's in the Air Force. Um, he's in the Air Force. Uh, great guys. We had a great time. Um, we drank a little whiskey, sang some campfire songs, howled at the moon. It was a pretty good time up there. Um, thanks for the experience. Uh, definitely wonderful views, and I hope you guys are doing all right. It is the 27th of the 5th. What a beautiful morning. Look at this view. I just left my brother and speedball down the trail. They're going to go ahead and head on home. Uh, he's had enough. Uh, his legs were giving out on him. They're going to take a zero day and head back down to Neil's Gap. And uh, I'm just going to continue on going as long as I can. But I uh, stopped for a short break on this overlook and I just had to shoot a video. And I'll tell you, it doesn't know justice. It's worth the hike. Look at that view. Another day on the trail. Enjoy what you can. So the next morning I get up and I pack up my stuff and I say goodbyes. And uh, they were planning on spending another day uh, up in... Uh, rock spring top while I'm going to go push on towards uh, low gap shelter <clears throat> beautiful day uh, beautiful hike some great views tried to get some self portraits there and this is on um, this is a uh, poor mountain these are the views from poor mountain as I climbed around. Uh, water's a little hard to find here. <clears throat> I definitely pulled in a low gap thirsty. Some beautiful views. Look at that. These are some hikers I met down at low gap. Um, these two here are brothers and I called them the, the speed team because they were doing like 25-30 miles a day uh, training to attempt to break the 
unsupported speed record AT through hike. Um, again, very, very good guys. I hooked them up with some bandages and some coffee and some other things. Uh, met them later out in uh, Hiawassee. Uh, before I left, uh, they just kind of showed up there one day. It was really nice. And, but they're off on their way to North Carolina. Uh, I hope you guys both made it. Let me know. And these other two gentlemen, this guy here was a through hiker uh, once upon a time. And uh, he was telling through hiker stories, and uh, him and his buddy were section hiking this part of the Appalachian Trail. That was a great day at Low Gap. It's the 27th of the 5th. Spending the night at Low Gap Shelter, Georgia. Beautiful here. You got a little stream running right next to the shelter. So I don't have to travel too far for water, obviously. And uh, got my hammock strung up inside the shelter. I think I'm gonna be here alone tonight. Enjoy what you can. Throughout the evening at Low Gap, there must have been 25, 30 people show up in and around the shelter camping and whatnot. It uh, became very crowded very quickly. Uh, the privy was overflowing, so everybody was kind of going around the privy, um, which made things kind of uncomfortable, but uh, we all got through it. I was literally probably the last one in the shelter area to take off that morning um, with full intent on making it to um, <clears throat> Tree Mountain Shelter the next day. Uh, the, the the initial hike up was nice and pleasant, and uh, I went on through to, where is it? Yeah, I made it up and around like Chattahoochee Gap, and um, the entire mountainside has slid down years and years ago, and there's weeds growing through the rocks and whatnot. Um, I was... Traversing this half mile trek uh, when I put my foot down on a rock um, it felt firm uh, When I released pressure from my other foot the rock slid and slammed my foot into another rock So I tweaked my ankle, and I think I've got a minor stress fracture over the whole ordeal uh, Needless to say I quickly realized when I almost fell off the mountain. Thank goodness for your trekking poles um, You definitely need those <clears throat> As I hobbled four, four miles off the mountain, I had to climb two peaks and go back down one. Um, how stupid it really was to be out there by myself. I could have really hurt myself seriously. And uh, the four miles was a, was a nice reminder um, of why you probably should go in groups. And I will, when I return to the Appalachian Trail, I will have people with me the whole way. And these are some shots I took along the way that day before I got hurt. <clears throat> some beautiful views here. And that's when I got off the trail. That's uh, I got on Uni Unicoi Gap uh, where I called a shuttle uh, to come take me off the trail. Uh, took me initially, I called a guy, um, Woody's Bike Rentals from um, Helen, Georgia. And he came and picked me up, but uh, I offered him a little more money to take me to Hiawassee to meet up with my brother, but uh, he refused. So I took the shuttle into Helen and got a cheeseburger and uh, waited for the shuttle. We called Lumpy from Neil's Gap, uh, 40 more bucks, to uh, get me out to Hiawassee. So that was a pretty expensive shuttle ride day just to get off the mountain. Uh, but my foot and my hip and my ankle were hurting so bad, I, you know, I was just there. And again, that's the sign right there, Unicoi Gap. This is at the Hiawassee Hotel we stayed out. There was just like this back alleyway. We stayed on the back side of the Budget Inn. And, uh... This is honeysuckle with some pine cones. I thought that was a pretty good shot. But basically that was my trip. Uh, I spent three days in Hiawassee. Um, highly recommended. Uh, it's a great mountain town with with uh, real people. And um, 
you know, real restaurants, and it wasn't, you know, like super touristy at all. We really enjoyed our stay at Helen. In Hiawassee. I'm walking down to get some dinner. Got Patch and Speedball in front of us. Woo! Tweak my ankle today. We'll see how tomorrow is. It would be impossible to take a trip like this without it touching you, changing you. I definitely got the AT bug, and I plan on returning every year. I think I'm going to go with uh, two week hikes and um, just do a section at a time. I'd like to earn uh, all my patches uh, one at a time. I figure two weeks is a good good vacation for me on this. Uh, amazing experience if you ever have the opportunity to hike the Appalachian Trail or even just a few miles of it. Uh, I highly encourage you to do so. It's such a beautiful place to be. I'm glad I made it. It is the 30th of the 5th. 2013. I made it a whole 50 miles on the Georgia Appalachian Trail before injury has taken me off. Uh, coming out of Low Gap Shelter, round and round Chattahoochee Gap, uh, the entire mountainside uh, was laid down and there's loose rocks for about a half a mile or so. Uh, my foot caught a loose rock, I tweaked my ankle, I think I pulled a tendon or something. Uh, I tried to put on my pack. I've been nursing it for two days, and it's just not happening. So I'll be heading home on the Greyhound on Saturday, and uh, I'll go home and put up some videos that I took on my regular camera. I don't have access to a computer here, so I'll have to upload those, and I'm going to piece the whole thing together and uh, just do one big documentary kind of thing. Regrettably, I can't finish my trip this year, but I do plan on returning uh, probably in 2015. Thank you everybody who supported me and helped me in uh, this journey. A beautiful country. had a wonderful experience uh, until I just about fell off the mountain. And it was a very long four miles all by myself with a 50 pound pack hubbling down to Unicoi Gap to catch a shuttle. Uh, I'll tell the whole story in a video a little later. I just wanted to let everybody know that I'm okay. Um, I'm heading home, and uh, what do you do, you know, what do you do? Uh, thank you. Enjoy what you can, everybody.